Hello everybody, this is Cam with Projector Reviews and today we have a treat for you. Normally we have Phil here who interviews me about gaming reviews, but we're flipping it around and I'm going to interview Phil because we chose a new game and Phil, tell me what that game is. Gran Turismo 7 for you driving people out there. So Phil, tell me about Gran Turismo 7 and what projector did you choose? for the review. Okay, so I did um, Gran Turismo, Turismo 7. Um, I am a driving game person, right? So literally the reason why I have, a, I bought a PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, and now a PlayStation 5 is pretty much for Gran Turismo because you get the opportunity to drive hundreds of cars that you could possibly never have the opportunity to drive in the real world. So sometimes people are just gamers, but Gran Turismo is like a culture. There's literally driving competitions. You can win awards to actually win the competition and go drive real cars for people. So whether you're a car enthusiast or a, or a gaming enthusiast, um, it, it kind of um, ticks both boxes. I have the reflexes of a three-toed sloth, so I suck at playing games, but the opportunity, so I'm not gonna win a lot of things, but the opportunity to jump in a Porsche, Bugatti Veyron, or a GTR, and actually have that experience is, is a great thing. There's hundreds and hundreds of cars you can, actually, you can actually drive. Gotcha. So tell me about gaming on a gaming projector versus gaming on, let's say, a 55 or 65 inch TV. Uh, actually, one of the first times I actually got to play a video game on a projector was um, on a on a PS2. I think it was like Gran, um, Gran Turismo 2 or Gran Turismo 3. And the thing about it, when you're um, well, the main view in the game is you're in a um, you can change your view, so you can be in, you can be looking from behind the car and be look at the from. You can also be um, looking directly through the windshield. But the best game. Um, view I believe is the one where you're behind the wheel. I so agree. because the screen is so big, it's literally it's the size of a car. So if you ever play it on a on a TV, it doesn't feel like you're actually in a car. This feels like you're actually driving the car. The steering wheel on a hundred something inch screen sitting where I'm at, if I go like this, it feels like that steering wheel is the actual size it would be. So it's way more like driving an actual um, an actual vehicle on a on a racetrack that you would never have the opportunity to drive a car on. Gotcha. Yeah, I also like the view behind the steering wheel to make it feel like you're really inside the car. Uh, so, does a projector have any any modes or anything like that for for making a a driving game any better? Yeah. So we had to say, okay, what projectors um, should should we use? So um, BenQ has been nice enough to let us borrow a couple projectors for this for these videos and the one we chose was the TK700 and what I liked about it is number one it's bright it's 3200 anti-lumens and that helps when you're playing an HDR video game and the video game remember it's all outside a lot of these video games you're supposed to be in castles or in nighttime stuff this is you're driving a bright red Ferrari on a sunny day on a racetrack and you want that vibrancy, the, 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 the actual, that actual brightness really, really helps with that. I mean, it's a gaming projector, so it has incredibly low lag. It's like, I think 4K at 60 frames per second, which is what we run the game on mostly, I run the game on, on mostly, was 16.67 milliseconds. Yeah. So if you have, a, if you have, the best way to think of it, if you have a gaming wheel, and if you go like this, the wheel is, responds exactly. So it's not like you go like this and the wheel goes, Right. After you, right? <laughs> After the so, fact. so having um, a low lag really helps when it feels like when you turn that wheel, it actually does it. The other thing too is you can take your controller if, if like a poor guy sometimes can't have, can't go out and buy a, a wheel. Like I now I want to go out and buy a brand new Thrustmaster after playing this thing. Yes. Okay, yes. but you can take the the um, actual the gaming controller because it's um because it has um. Uh, Acceler accelerometers in it, yes. you can just do this and actually drive it. By the way, I think that's actually the better way to do it because I tried the different ones where you can use the, the buttons, but when you hit the do buttons, it. it makes you accidentally hit the brake and everything else. Yes. So it's actually better just to, to use the controller as an actual steering wheel and then just set the settings in the, uh, on the game so you can actually, yeah, so it kind of responds more naturally to how you would actually drive it. But 
like I said, the brightness of the projector, the low lag, it has an HDR game mode. So that, and, and BenQs are pretty good when it comes to color reproduction, because you want your Ferrari red yes. to be Ferrari red. So it does a really good job with, with color reproduction. It has a, a great HDR game mode, so you get the low lag and everything else that really pulls you into what the game, what, what's going on with the game. Gotcha. And so since you're playing on a, with a projector on a big projector screen, how about, is there any split screen capability or two player or solo player? Yeah. How's that work? Well, that's another thing too. Cause um, I, I, like a lot of games now are single player. It's just you, right? But I love having the opportunity to sit down with maybe my son or one of my buddies and, and race side by side on the same couch. I love on um, same couch multiplayer stuff, right? Where two people could actually play at the same time. Well, you're gonna split a screen. But if you split a, a 32 inch computer monitor, come on. You know, and even if you split a 55 inch monitor or a 60 inch monitor from far away, it's, it's tiny. But a split screen on a 110 or a 100 inch screen, now each one of you still have like a 60 inch screen. It's a big screen. So um, it really does enhance that experience. So when you have, so your side of the screen, you could really focus on it. It's big enough to make it engaging and the same thing with them. So if anybody that's getting into, if you really want to explore multiplayer, um, a projector like a BenQ or on a big screen playing a, a, on a really good gaming system makes a big difference. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I think we've covered a lot of territory on this, but I don't think we spoke about sound or anything like that. Is there anything special about okay. sound so, or so sound this is So this, this little, the, the little TK700, if you look at it, it's pretty darn compact. A gaming projector that's, that's compact and transportable enough to take from place to place. So it's not gonna have room for a gigantic sound system. But I will say that the sound on it has like a, a single five watt speaker in it. It does, a, it does a surprisingly good job. And there's also sound modes for games on it as well. So you can try to optimize the sound when you're playing a game versus while you're watching a movie. Well, actually, since we were talking about the sound thing, um, it has like, and like I said, it has a little speaker. And a lot of times you want to plug your, your game system directly into your projector, but maybe you have a sound bar or a big sound system like me right. and like this dude. So, yes, he does. And, <laughs> and the sound of Gran Turismo is done in, it's, it's immersive 3D audio. So if you have a big sound system, maybe Adobe Atmos sound system, sound bar, surround sound system, you want that. You want the car to sound like it's coming from behind you and pass over your head. And you want the crowd cheering all around you because that's part of the whole experience, right? Yes. So, but, and so the, the projector has an eARC output. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to take the, the PlayStation, plug it into the projector. The projector will send the picture to your screen and then it will send the audio off to the sound system. So now you get this immersive picture but you also can take advantage if you, of the immersive sound. So good sound if you gotta take it with you, but even better sound if you wanna connect it to your sound system. Oh, the other thing we haven't talked about is what it's available on. Oh, yes. The reason why I have PlayStations is because Gran Turismo is only available on PlayStation. It's a, I think the company is called Polyphony. Um, yeah. Digital, and they work in conjunction with um, Sony Interactive to make this game. And it's always been the game that they use to show off yes. the full capabilities <laughs> of a PlayStation. Yes. So, for example, now um, you can get it on PlayStation 4, you can get it on PlayStation 5, and the price varies from right now it's on sale, but the price varies normally from $49 to $79, depending on if you want a PS4 version or if you want a version that's available on, on PS4 and PS, that's, that works on PS4 and PS5. I have a PS4 and I have a PS5, so buying that other one means I can have it on both, on both game systems, one for my son and one for me. So, so that's one of the things I like about it. Um, picture quality. You can prioritize in the game whether you want, you want to prioritize high frame rate or whether or not you want to utilize what's called ray tracing. Gotcha. And um, what that is for is, is, that's not in the game. What that's for is after you drive, the, the coolest thing after the thing is, like I said, I suck at driving, but I like to look, <laughs> I like to, I drove to the, I, I win my little race because I have it set to beginner mode so I can actually win some stuff. <laughs> but then at the end, you can go back and replay it. And that's when it gets really cool because ray tracing is basically 
um, a better way of win rendering um, a game or anything you're looking at. So reflections on the cars, the reflections in the in the in the water on the ground, all of that stuff gets to be shown when you get. So basically, you race it, then you get to back go back and watch a movie mm -hmm. of you actually racing your playback. Your playback. So the ray tracing is, it gives you just an amazing looking playback. So you can actually see um, what you're doing. Another tip is, Cam, we were talking about this before. Uh -huh. If you can buy a deluxe package, what should you always buy? Get the deluxe package. <laughs> Why? You want the extra credits, you want the benefits, you want the, you, want the, you want the leg up on the game. So it gives you a little boost so you start out ahead. Exactly. So when you start off with, with, um, with uh, Gran Turismo 7, they give you you start off with an itty bitty little car, like a little Fiat little yeah, little car, little, and, and you have to work your way yeah. up. So there's so so basically you're in this world of like this resort, this car resort, yes. and then that car resort there's a place where you can go get a driver, your licenses, so you can get different licenses, and of course if you get licenses, you get money, you get credits, which you can buy stuff with, and you get access to more vehicles and more tracks. Then you also have a, a, a world circuit, and as you get better more tracks open up there's like a hundred and something tracks there <laughs> then there's a you can buy cars there's a used car dealership and there's over 400 cars there yeah tons of cars uh, and then you have tuning places where you could tune your car and soup them up there's like a hundred different things you can add to each car so if you want to add turbos and suspension <laughs> to, to any car in your library you could do that there's even a place where you can bespoke your car and change your stickers your your, your all of the stuff so you can fully customize so there's actually a whole section in your garage where you can actually share your creation so i went out i'm an old z car guy cam knows that yes so the first so the first thing i wanted was to buy the z and oh, of course they don't give you any credits so i uh, be, me being the three-toed sloth video gamer that plays really slow, I'd realize it'd be three months before I actually got enough money to get the car. So I went out and spent the $20 for the 2 million credits. But if you get the deluxe, spent. you get the <laughs> deluxe game, you actually get those credits from the get-go. So I'll tell you, if you really want to jump into it and, and build your car collection more rapidly and get access to more tracks quicker, you definitely want to get that. And, and by the way, the, the Datsun, mm -hmm. I, I, I am, like I said, I'm a car guy. And I will tell you that little details matter to me. And when I was looking at it on that screen, on my projection screen, the rendered version of the car. I have one. And I'm so, every garage. little part about it. I got one in my garage. So <laughs> an old 70s Datsun, it looked identical. I mean, you could see like the gauges, the, the way the little wrinkle of the leather, the vinyl on the dashboard, it looked correct. And then whether and, and that ray tracing really made it. So you had ra a powerful PlayStation with ray tracing, with 4K HDR on a PlayStation on a screen that is a hundred something inches. When the car rotates around, it looks like it's actually a car rotating around. So if you're a gamer, it's an awesome gaming experience. I'm nowhere near it through this game, right. which means I'm going to go get me a, uh, a Thrustmaster. So maybe yes. the three so <laughs> sloth could rent a little few more few more races yes. but so the worlds are massive but even if you're not the most hardcore gamer but you're into just realistic worlds and you want to explore you know the racetracks in Japan and, and Tokyo and you know you can race on the Tokyo Speedway you can go to Newburn Ring you can go race nice. on the NASCAR track do all that <laughs> stuff and you want it to feel like you're actually there as a car person it really really is a cool game gotcha Awesome. Well, I think that is it. Is there anything you want to do to wrap this up? Um, no, no. But the main thing I always want to tell people is we do these series because we're trying to show people that it, it's something more about playing a video game on a projection system. And you really don't get it until you do it. So we thank um, BenQ for giving us the opportunity to talk about these types of things. And we have some new games coming. So Cam, you're working on a new game. What game are you working on today? Dying Light 2. So if you're a zombie post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic type person, <laughs> I can't say it. If you like to shoot zombies. <laughs> if you like to shoot zombies, <laughs> this is a game for you because it's chock full of zombies and they're not just regular zombies that are all moving really slow and they're gonna come get you. There's some of those, but let me tell you, there's some other ones that are hopping around, it's on fire, tries to blow up on me. Dying Light 2, 
coming yes, up. Yes. So anything with a steering wheel, you'll probably get a review from me. Anything with that you shoot something or blow something up or cast magical spells, it's probably going to be Cam. So, so thank you guys for hanging out with us today as we talked about Gran Turismo 7. So check it out. I think you're going to really love it. And we will talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.